In addition to record companies and artists making money from all of those valuable uh, areas such as sales, both in stores, physical sales of CDs, sale of digital copies on iTunes and Amazon and other areas. There's another very important source of revenue for record companies and artists that's starting to grow. Internet streaming, internet streaming, streaming royalties is becoming more and more important in the business. Anytime a recording is digitally transmitted, a digital transmission can occur either through cable, satellite radio, or webcasting, the record company and artist are entitled to be compensated for those uses. What's the problem right now? The problem is that the amount that's paid for those uses is so small. I remember years ago someone saying that the music business is a business of pennies, a business of pennies. Well, the situation is right now that for digital streaming and internet webcasting, those pennies are being broken down to even smaller portion, tenths of pennies, tenths of pennies. So the amount that you receive, both the record company and the artist will receive for these types of services depend on the types of uses. There's a couple of types of uses I want to talk about. First is the non-interactive stream, the non-interactive use. What is non-interactive? That's where the consumer, the person that's listening to the webcast, cannot decide to listen to a particular song multiple times. In other words, it's similar to Pandora. You punch in or you, you, you put in the artist that you like, and Pandora will kind of program a radio station with other songs that sound similar to this artist. In other words, you don't have the right to pick this particular songs that you want to hear. Pandora, because of that, is paying a royalties in the amount of only a tenth of a penny, one-tenth of a penny per stream. It's causing quite a bit of, of uh, rancor within the music industry. New services called interactive services, and interactive services are where you can uh, pick a particular song and listen to it multiple times. You can pick anything from the vast catalog on a service such as, say, Spotify, and listen to it as much as you want. Spotify also has a radio-like service similar to Pandora, and those royalties vary. The non-interactive use or the radio-like service through Spotify, the royalty rates might be smaller, a little more than a tenth of a penny. But for interactive use, where you actually pick the songs and listen to them multiple times, that royalty rate can increase to maybe three-tenths of a penny very small. You say, well, how can you make money in that area? Well, that's been the problem currently. Many artists are very concerned with the low amount of royalties that they're receiving at this point. But as new services, as new entrepreneurs, as new innovative services are being developed, you're going to find different types of deals that are being struck by the record companies and these internet service providers. While Pandora pays a specific amount for each stream, some of the new internet services are entering into deals with major record labels where they will not only pay a per stream rate, but they will pay a portion of their advertising and subscription money that they make from their various subscribers. Those of you who are familiar with Spotify know that you can listen to it for free or you can subscribe on a monthly basis. And if you do that, you don't have to listen to the ads and you can listen to any of the music that you want. You have complete access to the music. Most of the newer internet streaming services, both non-interactive and interactive, are basing their business model on an ad and subscription model basis. What do I mean by that? Well, they're selling ads that will play maybe every three or four songs, or they'll offer a subscription service where you can pay a monthly amount, then that will eliminate the ads, and you can play any of the music you want at any time. A lot of the record labels are entering into special deals, licensing their entire catalogs to these internet services, iRadio, Spotify, and they're receiving a percentage of the advertising and subscription revenue generated by these new services. And those royalties then are prorated according to the specific streaming 
of the songs in their catalog. Independent companies or artists can license their music to these internet services as well. And many of them use what are called aggregators like Nimbit, TuneCore, or CD Baby, who act as middle people who aggregate or put together a number of independent artists and license their music to these internet services. Of course, they get paid a fee for that, but it allows these artists to enter into the market of internet streaming. So while the internet streaming royalties are considered very low by a number of artists, they feel it's too low. As a matter of fact, a number of artists have refused to allow their music to be streamed because of the low royalties. The hope is that as the subscriber base grows, currently it's only a few million, but should it reach scale for these various services, maybe 50 million people or more, the amount of revenue available for these royalties to be prorated will grow as well. And artists, songwriters, and record companies will receive a fairer share of that income. Now, who accounts to the record company and the artist for the revenue generated from streaming services? Well, the RIAA, the Recording Industry Association of America, established a specific performance rights organization to handle these types of royalties. That organization is called Sound Exchange, and it's based in Washington, D.C. And every record company and every artist needs to register with Sound Exchange to receive their royalties from Internet streaming and the digital transmission of their works. I'm always interested in artists receiving their fair share from the use of their recordings, and I'm happy to say that the recording labels, recording artists, and Sound Exchange came to an agreement years ago, making sure that the royalties generated from the digital transmission of recordings would be split between the artist and the record company in a fair and equal way. The breakdown is 50% to the record company, 45% to the featured artist, and 5% to the non-featured or session musicians or vocalists. So that money is paid directly to the record company, directly to the featured artist, and directly to the unions. But artists, if you don't register with Sound Exchange, you can't receive your royalties. So it's very important for you to register with Sound Exchange so that you can receive your royalties from digital audio transmission and internet streaming. As this internet streaming model continues to evolve, record companies and internet service providers are coming up with different kinds of deals now. A major label might license their entire catalog of recordings to an internet service provider in exchange for being paid that 50% of the royalty directly to them while allowing the 45% to the featured artist and 5% to the non-featured artist to be paid through Sound Exchange. However, don't think this is a given. If you're signed to a major label, it's very important for you to check your contract very carefully to see if you're even entitled to royalties from these various services. In some contracts with major labels, there will be a provision stating that any licensing of the record label's entire catalog of sound recordings and even videos may not require them to pay a royalty at all to the artist. So this creates a great situation for independent artists and it's a great time to be an independent artist and to own the rights to the sound recording yourself so that you can license either through aggregators like Nimbit or TuneCore or others you can receive the record company royalties as well as the artist royalties. So this is the best time to DIO, do it ourselves. Build a team of people that can help you build your own independent company, owning and developing the recordings, both audio and video. Exploit those assets on various platforms webcasting, internet streaming, sales on iTunes, uh, licensing uh, for various movies and commercials, building up their audience 
And once again, that gets back to powerful product, building up those valuable assets in their sound recordings and owning that interest to exploit it in a number of ways to build the value in their company.